Good evening and welcome to River Life Church International's Wednesday Night Bible Study. My name is Pastor Joe and just welcome you this evening to join us as we study the Word of God together and to allow His Word to grow deeper in our lives. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for tonight. I thank you for everybody that is tuning in. Lord God, let us all be touched by your word this very evening. And that we would just take time just to continually focus on you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Tonight's study comes out of Hebrews chapter 13. I've, I've just finished up personally studying uh, the book of Hebrews and this scripture just stuck out to me a couple days ago as I studied it. And I just thought I'd share it with you this very evening. It comes from Hebrews chapter 13 through uh, verse 15. Through him, let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. As I read that the first time, it just poof, jumped out of the page at me. The fruit of lips that acknowledge him. I'm like, wow. I've read Hebrews before, but whoa, I not, it hasn't jumped out at me like that before. And you know that there's something that God is trying to speak to you and to me when, when the scriptures just come flying out, <laughs> out of the pages and just like, ooh, right there. Okay, God, what do you want to speak? Holy Spirit, what are you trying to share with me? This very day. Focusing on that continually offering up a sacrifice to God. See, that sacrifice talks about it represents an offering to God. Offering to God. Sacrifice. What am I offering to God? That praise. We know that uh, Romans 12, 1 says, Our very lives should be as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God offering ourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. And tonight I want to focus on the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. What is this fruit? What, 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 what does it mean, fruit of the lips? See, fruit in the Bible is used in showing meaning, of, meaning of result. It's defined as, as a result, outcome, or product, meaning a result, outcome, or product. That is what fruit is represented in, in the scriptures. We know that the Holy Spirit produces in believers the fruit of the Spirit. We find that in Galatians chapter 5, 22 through 23. And this is what we need as Christians. We need the fruit of the Spirit to be in our lives and to be functioning. And where we lack certain fruit, we need the Holy Spirit to produce those fruit in us, and he is willing. We also know with fruit as believers, we're to produce fruit in keeping with repentance. Matthew 3, 8, referring to our thoughts, words, and deeds, and is that are, are, we, are we repentant? We should be having a, a, a fruit that is produced in our lives in keeping with repentance, that humility before God. We also read in Matthew 7, verses 16 through 20, we also are able to identify false teachers based on fruit of their lives. We know that we're to look at the fruit. We're supposed to look at the fruit. We're going to be known by our fruit. And if the fruit is not good, we should be able to identify, okay, I probably shouldn't be listening or partnering up with what this person is saying. To see the Bible is full of teaching on fruit. See, the fruit of lips here in Hebrews 13 through 15 brings focus on words that we use. Words that we use. See, the, the fruit of our lips is, I just want to start with a question here. Is the fruit of our lips yielding a product that God expects and deserves? Is the fruit of our lips yielding a product that God expects and deserves. Powerful. It's a powerful question that we need to ask ourselves daily is what I'm saying. What the fruit upon my lips, is it, is it what God expects? Is it, is, it, is it yielding a product 
that God expects and deserves. And here are a few contrasts that have to do with fruit. As I was studying this and just really stuck out to me. Is the fruit green or is the fruit ripe? The fruit of our lips. Is it green or is it ripe? See, <laughs> there is times when we get stuck in different frustrations and disappointments that we discover some, some conversations that develop internally and also externally. And this leads to fruit on our lips that are green. That just, they're not, it's not good for nothing. It, it, it does us no good. And we know that, that those internal conversations we have might never come out. But boy, they can tear down some other areas in our lives where it just causes the lips, or, or the fruit of our lips to continue to be green and not going anywhere in a positive direction. And often, like I said, when we're stuck in those ruts, when we're stuck in those conversations internally or externally because of frustrations and disappointments or situations that we're going through, seasons in our lives that, man, we're just, seems like we're just really going through it. If we're allowing those to, to, to control us, it's going to, it's going to affect the fruit of our lips. And maybe we're not praising God like we should. Maybe we're, we're, not even, we're not even uttering his name like we used to. That becomes a problem. That's a, that's a sign that, okay, there's something going on with the fruit of my lips because I, maybe I'll just sing or praise God on a Sunday. But, boy, Monday through Saturday, I want nothing to do with God because, boy, I'm just, I'm bitter. I'm going through it. I'm, I'm having some disappointments in my life and frustrations that you know, I'm just, why, why would I even ask God right now? I feel like God isn't even hearing. But that, we know that's not true. And see, that's the, that's the fruit of our lips being green. It's, it's no good. It, it, it does, no, does us no good. Just like, a, just like a green raspberry, you don't want to eat that. It, it's, gonna have, it's not going to be any good. You want that baby to be ripe. You want that thing to be dark red and, and sweet and, and soft. Those green raspberries, they're tough and bitter. They're no good. They're no good. See, Ephesians 4.29 says, Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. See, the fruit of our lips remains green, okay, until the reality of this verse becomes our daily rule. I remember as a teacher, I had daily guidelines that these they were non-negotiables. In my classroom as a, as a second grade teacher, I had five of them. And they were, they were, there was no exceptions to those rules, okay? Just like this scripture, this four, uh, 429 of Ephesians must become that daily guideline, that daily rule that we, that we follow because our words are going to stay, remain green until that verse becomes that daily guideline and, and, and it's not just an exception in our lives. We can't let it, this scripture be an exception, but it has to be our daily guideline. See, ripe fruit is the best fruit. <laughs> ripe fruit is the best fruit. We got to understand that. Which leads to the next contrast. Is the fruit of our lips sweet or rotten? Think of, there's people that are looking for encouragement. They're looking for inspiration they're looking for someone to build them up and especially from christians and but are caught with maybe some some crossfire friendly fire we'll put it for some friendly fire you know friendly fire is not good in war it it breaks my heart to hear when there's someone gets caught in friendly fire whether it's here in the united states with with our police force or or if it's in war and sometimes people get caught in our friendly fire and when, when we shouldn't even be speaking some of these things at all. And um, it can be filthy words. It can be cold and, and bitterness and just downright rotten. 
and it can tear other people down. That's some rotten things. See, if we could just develop a habit, <laughs> I would love this. If we can just develop a habit of, that we would first take a bite of our own words first before we would send them out. I think we would be surprised by what some of those words would taste like. Not always sweet. <laughs> I think we would be biting into some rotten words because we know that when we bite into a rotten apple, a rotten piece of fruit, or a, or a not ripe um, orange, what do we do? We take it right over to the garbage can and we throw it away because it, it's not going to do us any good. We don't want to eat that, nor do we want to keep it around and, and give it to anybody else. <laughs> I'm not for. I'm not gonna take a bite of a an apple. Oh, this is rotten. Hey, Judge, want an apple and give it to him and, and let him experience that rottenness. He's gonna have that same reaction. Why would I? Why would I set my son up for that kind of failure? Right? No, I'm gonna throw away that rotten word. If we would just, with the help of the Holy Spirit, take a bite of some of those words that we're about to send out, the fruit of our lips, and take a bite and say, Ooh, yeah, that tastes. Like well, if that's not ripe yet, because we know that there's some things we're supposed to say, they're just not ripe for the, the season. We know the word talks about the right word in the right season. Not necessarily a, a, a unripe word is a bad word. Maybe it's just bad for the season. It's just not right for the season. We got to wait and, and have God help us to share right word, ripe words in the right season. Okay? That's a good word for all of us here. If we would just, if we would surprise ourselves with some of those words if we were to take a bite out of first before we sent them out. See, in closing, is the fruit of our lips, is it seasonal or is it continual? In order to get fruit, you know, we know that we first got to prepare the ground and we have to plant a seed. And, and part of our spiritual life that has to do with our, our words and, and our thoughts and those things that are planted in our mind, and then we allow these thoughts and words to grow, and we think about how to share them or express them, just like with our, our the things that we plant, we we cultivate them, they we we help them grow, and we get them ready to um, move along towards harvest time, just like with our thoughts and our words, the fruit of our lips is what we're preparing in our in our lives and our thoughts and in our is it is it is it heading into a right direction? Because we're going to head in that direction of where we share them, that harvest time, right? The things, the things that we were going to, okay, am I going to share these things? It's time to share them. See, Hebrews 13, 15 says, through him, let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. See, the key word here is continually. We need to understand, okay? We need to understand that our weekdays, should look like, we need to understand what our weekdays look like rather than just focusing on how I act and talk on a Sunday alone. See, I think so often we get, we get caught into a, you know, the, the fruit of our lips is just what we say on a Sunday, how we praise on a Sunday, how we praise God on a Sunday, how we, how we give honor to God on a Sunday, and how we act on a Sunday. But boy, it says the continually continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God. That means Sunday through Sunday, every single day. How are we continually giving up a sacrifice of praise to God? Or are we even? Because we talked about some different kind of fruits of the lips here. Is there some, some green fruit, things that are not ripe yet? There's some, some rottenness. Is there, are we just like, are we seasonal in what we say? I'm like, oh, when I'm feeling good, things are going good, I'm going to praise God. I'm going to say things. I'm going to give him honor and what he deserves. Or are we, are we continually, no matter what we're going through? Because, hey, God deserves the praise. He expects praise. He deserves praise even in the lowest of our times. Think about Apostle Paul <laughs> in prison. You think about those times where people are being flogged and, 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 and being tortured and or up to being martyred, and they're praising God. You read, you read the, the stories of, of, of people being martyred, you know. I, a book I like to pull out every once in a while is, is uh, Jesus Freaks, and it talks about the, the, the martyred Christians that have been recorded from hundreds of years ago. And it's just like, boy, they were praising God. 
no matter what was happening to them. It was, it was daily lifestyle. Is our daily lifestyle full of continual praising and acknowledging him, the fruit of our lips? We need to think about the fruit of our lips. Is it ripe? Is it, is it sweet? Is it continual? I want to encourage you with that here tonight. And as you go forward, let it not just be an, a seasonal thing or every once in a while thing, but let the praise, the fruit of our lips, let it be a continual thing because it's going to make a real difference in our lives. It's going to make a real difference in the lives of those that are close around us, our family, our kids, our, our spouses. And it's going to make a real difference into the world that we interact with. And it's just, it's just, just, going, to make a, just going to make a difference. And most of all, <laughs> It's going to honor God because I think every one of us want to honor God. And, and, and God wants us to honor him continually. And his blessings and favor, what's to come from that, only God knows. But I just want to bless you with that here tonight. Have a great rest of your week.